Hey there, welcome to the Eurostep, a Milwaukee Bucks podcast, probably a part of the Eurostep Podcast Network and the Blue Wire Podcast family. I'm Ty Windish, one of your hosts. I'm joined as always by the lone wolf, Rohan Kadi. He's not a lone wolf. We did a stupid wild animals gag before we started recording. Rohan, how's it going? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Uh, you know, it, we had our first like big snow today yeah. as we're recording on Sunday. It's uh, it's here. Yeah, it's here. winter is here. It's no longer it coming. Is. It's here. Yep. Oh, that's a Game of Thrones reference. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> I'm clearly a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> but the Wisconsin you know what winter. Hasn't... What? You know what else is not coming? Ooh, I don't know. Ooh, what? what? <laughs> I messed this up really badly. There was a, I was trying to do a segue that we already did our first playback. Oh, work. nice. It didn't really work. It That's okay. It went well in my well, head. Well, playback worked. Playback worked. Yes, playback worked really well. We did one last Thursday for the Raptors game. It was a fantastic experience. There was, it, was, it went really well, it, didn't it? It did. Yeah, it did. No, I, I was just thinking of the game and us thinking it was over and then it wasn't, but then it was and they lost. But yeah, we had people signing up to get into the Eurogroup Discord during the game just so they could come hang out and watch the game with us so playback is kind of like twitch for sports you can come watch us watch the game we have a good time with it we plan to be on air less and then we just had so much fun we talked for like three quarters of the game it was a blast but you have the option to mute us if you just want to watch the game which i don't blame anyone who does that Uh, But there's also a chat going on with everyone else in there. It was a really good, positive time. So if you want to get into the next one, get in the Discord. All you have to do is screenshot either your five-star review on Apple Podcasts of the show. Got to be five. Five. Uh, Or if you don't have Apple, we understand. Not everyone has Apple products. Some people too cool for Apple. You can screenshot proof that you are subscribed to the Substack, GSPN substack.com where you get notifications every time we post a new podcast with the links you need to find it also we do some writing on there i interviewed sandro mamukela shvelli rohan has done some analysis and there's more coming i believe on that note um so subscribe to the substack subscribe to the pod feed rate and review where you can and send proof of that to us on twitter at ty windish at arcadi jr at eurostep pod or at EurosteppPod, or maybe podcast, at gmail.com. I'll look up which one it is, but if you're not on Twitter. EurosteppPod. EurosteppPod. Thank you, Rohan. Um, Send it to us. Get in the Discord. And then Wednesday, December 15th. Wednesday, December 15th. Against the Pacers, that is when our next scheduled playback room is. And it's it's so fun. It was so fun. We got a lot of comments like, Oh, it's nice to be able to like have like a hangout space with Bucks fans because I live across the country. I don't really get to watch games with Bucks fans anymore. It was it was heartwarming. It was nice. It was a good experience. Can't wait to do it again. Yeah, I mean, you got people saying it's four a.m. here, and I'm yelling at this game because that was a that was a wild game. Um, and it's all it's all in sync, by the yeah, way. We yeah, yeah, we, we all get Everyone to watch it together. Sync. It's great. So check out playback. But okay, I think that's enough. Enough reminding and shilling. Obviously, the people know the GSPN pipeline. It's loaded. There's a lot happening. A lot of pods last week. If you haven't listened, you can go listen back. But we had to sit down and just figure out, Rohan, what's going on? The Bucks have had quite a busy week. It's hard to put it all together. We've had injuries, illnesses, roster moves. So I think we want to sit and take a look at all these roster moves. I think that is a good way to figure out like what's going on with the Bucks roster. What have we learned, you know, 20 plus games in however many games they played, but first let's check in on the injuries. Cause I do think they color some of what the Bucks are doing here on the roster move front. For sure. For sure. Let's start off with, uh, let's start off with Brooke Lopez, right? I know you and Jordan did an emergency pod. If you want to get a full in-depth breakdown of that, make sure you go listen back to that one, but we're just going to read, uh, Sort of reiterate, Brooke Lopez had back surgery, uh, I believe, last Friday? It was announced Thursday. Thursday. Because we knew going into the Raptors game. Okay, so it was last Thursday that he had successfully undergone back surgery. Uh, No idea what kind of back surgery, which kind of limits our options on outlook because it's like you don't know. 
oh, is he going to be out for like the next five years? Is he going to be like, <laughs> is he going to be coming back at any point? Yeah. The only sort of tidbit of information we have is that Mike Budenholzer said he, he is not ruling out a regular season return yes. for Brooke Lopez. And Zach Lowe followed that up with reporting on NBA Today or whatever the jump is called now. That It's NBA Today. Don't, it, that's don't, what I thought. Don't okay. compare it to the jump. Well, it, okay. Um, it's much better than the jump. I, that's so. what I hear. That's what I hear. Um, Moody Muzi. But um, I just thought about Perk. Zach Lowe reported... There's optimism in and around or whatever wording people use these days, the Bucks, that he will be back by the end of the regular season. Jordan and I were more pessimistic. I mean, the the other, you know, over 30 big man who ended up needing back surgery comp to make is Serge Ibaka, who has not still really doesn't look the same. And it's been a lot more than a few months. I mean, the end of the regular season, Believe it or not, it's like, what, four months from now? It's December. The end of the regular season is April. We're not that far from that anymore. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully it's a more of a minor thing, like you said. We don't know. All we can do is say, get well soon, Brooke. Hopefully everything is going well. Because obviously back injuries for anyone, much less a seven-foot-tall center, nothing to trifle with. Yeah, and let me remind everyone again that the media rules state that the team must designate a specific injury or illness, which the Bucks are not doing. Back. Uh, yeah, just back. Uh, <laughs> ah, this team, this team. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah whatever. And then uh, they're getting out of my nerves. I guess hopefully it's not a nerve thing with oh, Brooke. God. I, it's, I mean, we, who knows? Back surgery no, could mean anything. It, it, could, it could mean anything. Um, the other long term injury that we know about. I guess one of the, there's another one that we have an actual timeline for, but Dante DiVincenzo still out indefinitely. It looks like, I, I believe I saw him during the Heat game on for Saturday night in street clothes on the bench, moving around a bit. I think that was Dante, and we've seen him like dunking. So he seems to be closer, whatever that means, but no official timeline there. I don't believe he's doing five on five yet either, which is, Usually an indicator of someone being ready to come back soon, but we don't have much info there that's either. The, that's the Bucks' only injury timeline they give. Is, oh, he's playing five on five again. Yeah. But I don't think Dante that's, that's is. All, no, I don't believe so. I haven't seen anything from around the guys who are in shooting around or anything yeah. like like uh, Eric Name or anyone. So, uh, but I you would, would think, I would right? Like, if he can dunk, how far could he be? Probably not very far. Right? Like I mean, it's, it's dunking's it's, difficult. Yeah, it's like a foot heel thing. I mean, if you could take off dunk and land, I I don't know. I mean, I guess like quit quick cutting and stuff could be. Yeah, more. maybe like lateral stuff is yeah, iffy. Maybe. I don't know. It's but odd. It, but it's he's probably not too far away, is what we're saying. Yeah, he's, he's probably closer. He's probably closer. Yes. Which is a good thing. Yeah. We want to see Dante. Definitely. Obviously. Although um, I, I wonder at how close at one of the roster moves we're gonna look at. Which kind of to me feels a Dante esque player, but we'll we'll move on. Um, number thirty seven, Shemi Ojale. I'm saying his name again. I'm dropping the ban. He's too wow. important now. He's too important what? now. He's too important. Well, if if Brooke is out for a while, every big man is a lot more important now. Okay. <laughs> Everyone on the roster, including Mamu, who started a game over the weekend, like. That's Everyone fair. is important now, especially with Giannis banged up. We'll get there in a second. Um, I think should only be a week away, according to the original timeline, but uh, for his calf injury? Yes, it was a calf strain. That's something he dealt with in the preseason. That's why he didn't really play in the yeah. preseason. We had to wait a while to see his debut. Uh, it just seems like it's been a lingering thing for him, and obviously you want to be cautious about it, especially with calf injuries. Those can be a little tedious because those can – you know, get into, I'm not saying it is, but it can get into Achilles yeah. things. So you just want to be super, super careful with those types of injuries. Uh, but luckily we got a timeline for Shemi and uh, he's only about like a week away, like you said. So we'll get uh, a re-evaluation, an update, hopefully. I don't know yeah. this team. Yeah, you never um, know, but. Hopefully that's the, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to go out on the limb and say, I say they do it. Am I going to get burned? Probably, <laughs> but I have optimism. Uh, but there is another player who is dealing with a calf injury, and that is that's the big fella. That's yeah. Giannis. He has missed now his second straight game with what appears to be listed as calf soreness, I believe. Is it calf soreness? Yes, right calf soreness as per the Sunday injury report the Bucks released. 
Yeah, so he missed Thursday's game against the Raptors, which was a loss. He missed uh, he missed the blowout win over Miami because it's like, I don't know, whatever. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, no one was playing in that game. Yeah. I mean, Drew and Chris were, but, like, Giannis wasn't playing. Jimmy, bam, they weren't playing. Just tough. Yeah. It was, it was a weird game. It was a good result of the game, but, you know. Although Miami had two 20 million plus per year players in that game, and they were terrible. Wait, Lowry and Duncan? Oh. Duncan oh, Robinson, yeah. who's <laughs> four for eighty plus million, and finally had a good game for the like the first time. This I forgot season. he makes twenty mil. Oh yeah, he sure does. And Tyler <laughs> Harrow, well on the way to getting there, I'm sure. After this year, whenever he's going to hit free agency, so not a great sign for their multi million dollar men. Also, hey, we got to respect it. He's a full time podcast. Let's follow up on one of my preseason takes. One, Kyle Lowry, old. We're seeing it has scored 10, less than 10, twice as many times as he scored 20 this year. And my other Miami Heat take, Dwayne Dedman, top four shooter, still leading them in three-point percentage. 60%, I think. Or no, maybe it's not that high. But he is number one on the Miami Heat on very small attempts. But still, he also scored Miami's first six points against the Bucks on threes. So, Dwayne Dedman, a sniper. He really is. Uh, this team does not have shooters at all <laughs> they but, have one Dwayne Dedman but otherwise yes <laughs> I remember I remember thinking Dwayne Dedman was Milwaukee's answer at center before they got Brooke Lopez yeah not he, a bad take he was one of those guys for a while that it was like oh every team could use Dwayne Dedman I mean he's pretty good yeah he's, he's I mean, solid he's a dirty player but yeah and also I don't know I don't know if it's the beard or what he just looks so old now he does. I think he it's the beard. Real. He just—he looks like he's been around. He has, but he's... it's the beard combined with the shaved head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. That's heat culture. He just looks like—I I don't know. It's like the aesthetic, like the UD thing. Like everyone should look like they've not played for thirty years. <laughs> I'm surprised UD didn't get minutes in that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's surprising. Yeah, maybe it was a rest Especially game. Especially without Chippy, it was. They're gonna need him. Um, it's maybe it was a game off for for Haslam, but. <laughs> But Giannis, Giannis is out. Like you said, with the Cavs injury report, he is listed as questionable. questionable. Yeah. Which is an upgrade. Uh, that just brought me back to when we were just saying doubtful back doubtful? and forth. During, doubtful. During, he was doubtful the for the last two games, correct? For, correct. I correct. think going into doubtful. both, yeah. Yeah. So there's a chance that he plays uh, against the Cavs. A good Cavs team, by the way. Yeah. A very good Cavs team. Uh, with they're coming off a bad loss, not a bad loss, but like sort of a heartbreaking loss. So uh, they'll be, they'll be amped and ready for this Bucks team. Um, I don't know what to make of this. It just seems like Giannis every now and then for the last few seasons, he just misses like two or three games. Yeah. In a row. It's just what happens. Usually it's listed as a knee injury, knee soreness. Now it's calf soreness. I, Whatever I wonder, I wonder if this is like, you know how the Sixers just have Embiid play through every possible malady and it always comes back to bite them? I wonder if this is one of those things where on certain teams he would be playing and the Bucks are like, sorry, no. Like there's – you have an elevated risk right now. Your calf is a little bit strained. We're, you're not going to mess with it. Like if we lose some, we lose some, but you're not going to play. Like I do think there are teams and players who maybe he could be playing right now. But I think the Bucks smartly are not one of those teams who plays any sort of games with these injuries. That's just my take on on what we're seeing. Yeah. Also, Embiid never had surgery on a torn meniscus, by the way. It's, you know, rub some butter on that thing and uh, get back out there, yeah, buddy. He's the Giants athletic trainer from like 19. <laughs> John Johnson. <laughs> back before they invented more than one name. John Johnson. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Twitter OGs know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I say like I'm one, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's definitely a concerning injury for Giannis. Yeah. Any Giannis injury is concerning. Yeah. Uh, usually it's knee soreness. And like I said, now it's calf soreness. We just hope that it's nothing severe. Like we said, he's questionable, so it doesn't appear to be that significant. He was moving around on the sidelines. He's been playing assistant coach. Uh, he's getting ready for the future of his career. Uh, after he's on play and he's going to be coach, that I'm calling that right now. He is going to be an NBA coach. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, look at him when he's not playing. He's so antsy. I guess I don't know what the hell else he would do. I mean, he said like, was it in the GQ interview where he said like, once I'm done, I'm just going back to Greece. Like, I love Milwaukee, but like, I can see that. Yeah, I guess that he's just going to coach the team he played on when he was 18. Yeah, he might just like start his own basketball league in Greece. 
Who knows? Could do that. Yeah. Because he has he has Nike backing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That would be pretty um, sick. Speaking of sick, transition game on ten. Grayson Allen, questionable as well with illness. He also he was a very late scratch for Saturday's game against the Heat. Also with illness. The Bucks have it so if it was COVID, technically, supposedly, the Bucks would have to announce this differently. It's then you enter health and safety protocols. It's not out with an illness. So although infamously Chris Middleton missed a game with illness and then entered protocols. So I don't think we're out of the woods there with Grayson, although now it has been two days of injury reports where it's just illness and he's still questionable. So hopefully not COVID. Hopefully he is just under the weather, uh, under the weather, excuse me. Um, but we'll Boston probably tie over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, we should find out more soon, but obviously, you know, a big loss, especially without Giannis grace and a guy who can make up for some of that scoring load. Yeah. One of the best three point snipers in the entire league this season, just one of the most efficient jump shooters this season, grace and Allen. Um, but again, I will say with Chris, the only reason uh, he was away from the team, that's why he didn't get tested. Who knows if Grayson's just chilling at home and he hasn't been to the practice facility to get tested? Who knows? It's hard to say. You know, I wonder, because was Chris that late of a scratch when he missed his first game with illness? I believe he was, it was like afternoon. Because Grayson's, wasn't it like right before? So yeah. maybe he was there. Who knows? I mean, we'll, we'll figure it out. Obviously, it's easy to be a worry wart right now. I mean, COVID is bopping across the NBA. Especially with the Hornets having four players enter health and safety protocols In- immediately after their Bucks game where Giannis and LaMelo swapped jerseys and the team took LaMelo's jersey away from Giannis. I will say, the ban on jersey swapping just seems dumb to me. Wait, is that a thing? Yeah, then it, well, it was, and clearly they took the jersey away. But for a while, they banned it because COVID. And it's like, guys are running and jumping into each other. Like, I know you want to lessen risk. I get it. I don't know if that's like... He, he's already touched that jersey. Right, like, it's like, oh, okay, yeah. He was he was totally fine. They were... They, you can yell at a guy. You can fist bump, high five. Again, block shots, going for a loose ball. All of that, COVID will never transfer during basketball, of course, because it respects the game. That's not true. That was sarcasm to be 100% clear. But the jersey swap, then it's like, okay, we're not playing anymore, and now I'm going to infect. It's, it's kind of dumb, but whatever. Um, it was a cool moment that, of course, during the pandemic now is, like, crappy, which is unfortunate. But, yeah, hopefully the Bucks are unscathed, but it's, it's tough out here right now. It is. Hopefully, we wishing wishing Grayson yeah. the best. Hopefully, it's not. Yeah. Obviously, and Hopefully all the Hornets it's... guys and, and everybody else, of course. With, Obviously, with COVID. Is that it with injuries? No, George Hill. Oh yeah, duh. Oh, my George God. Hill. This, team is, this uh, team is banged up. It's we're back to six names on the injury report, and again, it's like all of them would slot in as rotation players at least a little bit, right? Like it's six yeah, important players. I think Giannis cracks the rotation. Yeah, it's, most teams. <laughs> Um, you can make the case, but a right knee hyperextension. He was also a pretty late scratch, if I remember right, for Saturday's game. He is also questionable for uh, Monday night's game against the Cavs. And again, I, I do feel like not to downplay whatever injuries are happening, but we just know the Bucks are going to be cautious in this time of year. So would not surprise me if this was, again, something where they're saying, let's just, we'd rather be safe than sorry, George. We've, we've, We'll just play the two-way guys and, and get through somehow. Don't worry about it. But, um, again, the fact that those three, Grayson, Hill, and Giannis, are all questionable, at least leads you to believe that none of their injuries are that severe. But we'll find out. Yeah, if George Hill is out for a game and then questionable the very next game, that leads you to believe that it's not a super serious injury. He's already missed one game. He missed that Hawks game uh, last month, I believe with uh, some sort of lower limb injury. It's just, he's, he's old. He's yeah. old. <laughs> yeah, especially early in the year when Drew and Chris were like swapping being out. He had a lot of load that I, I bet the Bucks didn't really expect him to be carrying at this point in the season or ever, if I'm being honest. Like, obviously they didn't sign George thinking he's going to start games and take a bunch of shots. So 
totally fine to give him a couple games off. I mean, make yeah, sure. he, he started half the games for the Bucks this season. Yeah, yeah, like he's really played a much bigger role than than anticipated. And how old is he? Thirty-four. He is Thirty-five. Ah, Thirty-five. Of Thirty-five. Turns thirty-six in May. Hopefully, it's a happy birthday during a fun playoff run for George. Oh, it's it's May. Yeah, they'll still be in there. Well, you got to remember, we're back to normal now. It's the yeah. finals. The finals being over by early June. It's going to be delightful. Yeah. The last I know playoff what I run said. was going on for. Okay, I know, I know. I I mean, I certainly agree. Um. Okay. Now, are we done with yeah. injuries? Yeah. Yeah. We're finally done with injuries. We can talk about the new guys now. Okay. Let's start with uh, Let's start with the guy that hasn't been covered yet. And that is uh, Wesley Matthews is back with the team. Uh, he Pull left one out. My guy, yeah, Yorgos. Left... <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> he's gone. Uh, uh, what a what an exciting Bucks tenure for Yorgos Kalatsikis. I wish just... someone could just grab all the clips of us talking about Yorgos because the sheer disturbance when he was signed to a three year deal. And we found out later it was a buyout rules thing, I think, the way they had to sign him. But especially now that he's been waived. And I was talking to Keith Smith, who covers the league um, for really well, uh, a lot of teams. But the way the rules are written to prevent cap circumvention, they cannot sign Yorgos to a two-way. Nor can he even sign with the G League itself and play for the herd. Like, he cannot be Bucks affiliated at all. Because he has more than 50K in guaranteed money, and that's like the magic cutoff there. So he doesn't seem like he's coming back. I mean, unless the Bucks want to break some more NBA rules, which maybe they will. Uh, we've know, seen it before. Penalties aren't that steep, apparently. Yeah, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Um, but I don't know if Yorgos is the guy you want to push the envelope on. Uh, you know what's like? I don't know this for a fact, but we might have spent more time talking about Yorgos than he spent <laughs> on an NBA court. He has spent a grand total of 48 minutes on the NBA court. Oh, I bet we've talked about your if, if you count off pod easily. Oh, on easily. Pod, I'm probably. even talking on. Yeah, uh, on so pod, that's, I think probably uh, he's amassed a grand total of 16 points on uh, four turnovers. Uh, he committed eight fouls. He had a steal, a block. He had eight total rebounds. Go off your goes. Uh, 50% from three career, 50% from three in the NBA, two of four. Three of seven on two is not great. Uh, 11 shots. What a career. Boogie Bucks. has literally matched his entire career in his two Bucks games. That's wild. <laughs> Nine rebounds, 18 points in two games. 26 total minutes for Boogie. What a wild deal. Last overall pick, right, in the draft? Yep, yep. number 60. Um, acquired in that pick, or acquired in that deal where they sent the 31st overall pick for these two seconds. And a future second. And I a think. future second, yeah. which is, I don't even know if that's future seconds that good. No. But yeah, that didn't go well. That deal. Well, the trade, the trade might work out actually because of the it other might. guy. But it might. let's get back to Wes, who we haven't. We had, he's the one guy we have not talked about on a pod, I believe. Um, after leaving the Bucks after the bubble yeah. to go ring chase with the Lakers, yeah, it did uh, not work. The Bucks won out. a title. Yeah, they did. And now he's back. The George Hill story, except George yeah. did not choose to leave. But no, George was very upset about. Leaving. Yeah, Wes was not, but. Maybe in retrospect, he was, because here he is. Um, like Boogie was on the couch and now is playing for the Bucks. At first, I didn't love this. I tweeted, I hope his deal is also non-guaranteed. Turns out it was, so there's some flexibility there with Wes. But, it, and, you know, I, I don't know how much he's going to provide offensively. He's started off his Bucks, his second Bucks tenure by shooting 33% from the, the field and from three would would not shock me if that's where he hovered for a lot of the year. I, I don't think we're going to see too much from him offensively anymore. But, I mean, just like a good value defensive guard who you can get for, I mean, li basically nothing. I mean, I guess the cost to see what you have in your ghost, which is probably not a huge expense. I think right now it's pretty obvious he's better than your ghost at NBA basketball. So, like... I don't think there's anything not to like about this. It feels like just like a very low floor, low ceiling. Like, let's just get another body. 
And when I really flipped around on it is when you go like count through the Bucks rotation and you just assume Brooke and Dante are going to be out for a while. I ended up with Wes as my ninth guy. So you're really, you're adding a rotation guy for such a low cost. Like, why not? Like, you know, he can still play defense. He fits in with the team despite the he leaving. He really knows the team. He knows the team. He knows how to play in the system. I think it's fine. Like, I'm not jacked like I am with Boogie, but I'm like, sure, why not get another rotation guy with a roster spot that, I mean, we had bemoaned. It was like more or less useless. Like, Yorgos just was not going to play in the NBA this year. No, absolutely not. Uh, I was the I was the one who uh, sort of uh, was wondering, hey, could they get him on a two way <laughs> again? Uh, like you mentioned in talking with Keith Smith, no, um, no, and also I don't see the case for making a move with one of the other one of their current two way guys. Which I mean, will... then what was the case for drafting? <laughs> well, they drafted him after one of the other guys. In fairness, but. I think all those IG pictures with Thanasis were the case for drafting him. <laughs> uh, sorry, Thanasis. Uh, hopefully you like Wes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone likes Wes. Yeah, what, what, are your know. Thoughts? what are your thoughts on Wes? Do you like Wes? I think it's fine. I think it's fine. It's all right. Like, I had to put this in perspective. Like, I was we uh, pulling back the curtain a little bit in our GSPN uh, little group chat. We were talking like, we are just a little over a year removed from Ty, you and I talking on this podcast about how we were upset that Wes Matthews was not playing more. And that's in reference to the uh, heat series in the bubble, which also was like only like 13 months ago or 14 months ago. Absolutely, absolutely wild. Insane. Yeah, it's, that's, that's nuts. So it's not that out of the realm of possibility to see him in the rotation, especially because we were upset that he's not playing more so he could defend Jimmy Butler. Like, if you can get a type of guy like that where you're not even have to guarantee that he's in the rotation, like you said, if he's the ninth guy, that's good. That's fine. Yorgos is doing nothing besides being TA's friend. Yeah. So what else? What do you have to lose? He's a He seems like a good guy. He's a good player. Wisconsin guy. Helps with the PR. Yeah. Plus, he just might actually be good. Who knows? You can take these chances. Well, yeah, and it's one of those two where – how many great guard defenders are on this roster besides Drew? Dante when he's healthy, which is why I alluded to there being a comparison there earlier. But otherwise, you look up and down. Like George Hill is good. I don't think he's clamping guys regularly. He's passable. He's, he's fine. I think Wes is a guy, though, who now, if you really want to put someone in a torture chamber, you can check out Drew and check in Wes for the, you know, whatever, six, 16 minutes, whatever it is that Drew is not on the floor and go, okay, now you go make that guard's life hell. Like, it's a useful thing. Like, that's what he brings, you know. The threes will fall. He's going to do the arrow once in every three attempts or so, probably. Did you, did you see on the Bucks broadcast that he wanted to retire the arrow celebration, but then everyone's like, oh, are you going to be shooting arrows? So he brought it back. <laughs> that's awesome. I will say, I think last year's Lakers, not – as nice of an offense to play in probably as this year's Bucks. So maybe he creeps as evident up. by this year's Lakers. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, so maybe he creeps up closer to like 36, I think percent that he shot with the Bucks last time. I think he was around 33 last year with the Lakers. So if he's like 35% from three and playing really good defense, that's helpful. There was a discussion. Can he replace or replicate PJ Tucker's role? I think on guards, I don't buy him really. Well, I think on Butler, I think on LeBron, he's okay, but I don't know. I mean, that's just really a non-issue now. I don't think the Lakers are getting out of the West, I guess. And their one remaining game, I guess we'll see if the Bucks throw him on LeBron or not. But, but KD, I just think, and I was trying to articulate this on Twitter, and Twitter is Twitter, but like... I think PJ is longer and a little bit stronger than Wes. And I think that's why he made for a good PJ Tucker De or a good Kevin Durant defender. I, I like Wes on strength more than either speed or finesse. And I think KD is such a finesse player that I'm just not sure if Wes can get enough into his airspace to bother him. But he is, I will say, Wes, similar height to PJ Tucker. Obviously known as a tenacious defender. I think it's like one of the, my look, my view on him vis-a-vis -vis KD is like, it's not the end of the world. If he ends up on KD on a possession, you're not freaking out. 
but I don't think he can do what PJ did. And I know there's this like, KD still scored 50 and all this, but like there's levels to this. Like he had to work really hard to score 50. I don't know if Wes could push him as hard as PJ. I don't think so, but we'll see. I guess I guess we'll see. I mean, maybe that's a, a regular season experiment to have if you're the Bucks. And especially the way the Bucks guard KD is they do it by they they have rotations, right? Like they don't just stick one guy in them the entire time. They switch it up, they throw Giannis on him, they throw like last year. I'm just talking about they threw PJ, they threw Giannis, they threw Chris, they threw True. Uh, Pat Connison was on him for a couple possessions. Uh, <laughs> those, those didn't end that well. <laughs> but if Wes ends up on him, like you're saying, it's all right. Like, he's not going to do any worse than anyone else is going to do. Yeah, right? and I think... Like, I, is he going to be do worse than Chris? Yes, I think so. Chris I, is a little longer. Yeah, I think Chris is actually a sneaky, okay KD defender. Chris I think he'll blocked do... KD's shots before. I remember this distinctly from when KD was on the Warriors. It was, I believe, the first game of the uh, – or the first Warriors-Bucks game of the Bud era where the, the Bucks absolutely smashed the Warriors in uh, – is it still at uh, Oracle? At I, think I think it was. I think it was. Still yeah. at Oracle, and it was like Giannis gave the post game, like we've arrived, sort of thing. Hell yeah! Uh, Katie, I remember that game. Katie had his shot blocked by Chris like two times in that game. Chris is like okay, he's six eight. He's a small, or maybe six seven now, but whatever. He's he's long, but I think like Wes certainly, I'd probably prefer him over Grayson, someone like that. Yes, um, or even even a good defender like Dante. Yeah, just because Dante is a little too small. He's small. Yeah. Um, but I think Wes is kind of small too, but and we'll see like, is number 37 play or Shemi playable by then or not D- hard to say. I think he still, to me, seems like an okay option to sponge some KD minutes, but if he just can't do any offense, then maybe not. Cause then you're probably giving away too much on the other end. But I think I keep coming back to with Wes. It's like, he's just better than other alternatives just right now in general. He's better than Dante cause Dante can't play. He's better than Yorgos because Yorgos wasn't going to play. He's better than probably. Also can't play. <laughs> yeah. He's better than Teague probably in the aggregate, although Teague had the one game. But I think generally those Jeff Teague minutes that I was pulling my hair out about during the last postseason run, Wes probably fits into those a little bit better. He doesn't bring the ball handling, which maybe is good because I didn't really enjoy Jeff Teague's ball handling in the playoffs all that often. And also it worked, on, it worked out enough. Also, he's better than Jordan Wara has been. And I think really, in addition to Dante's injury, that has a lot to do with some of these moves. Jordan Wara just not not found to be trustworthy anymore. I mean, we're talking about new players, but I think this is a big part of why we're seeing new players. I mean, Javante Smart played like 30 minutes in a game Jordan Wara played two minutes in. Like, that's a scary sign for Jordan Wara. Javante Smart is a two-way player who's been in the Bucks org for like a week. And he got all that run. Like, it's not, not even, going well. Is it a week? It's about a week, probably, when yeah, he played that game. Right. Yeah. Just what an absolute wild ride. Like, this is, it's very uncommon for a team to go through this many roster moves uh, at this time of year. Yeah. Uh, it's well, usually it's, like, we're not even to the trade window December. yet. The exactly. Real, yeah, exactly. You go ahead, it's like sorry. middle of December till the trade deadline is sort of when teams start making moves. We saw when the Bucks acquired George Hill, his first go around, that was middle of December because the trade window opened up. It's very, very uncommon for teams to make moves during this window. Uh, but it's like we talked about with all the injuries, it's out of necessity. And also this team, they don't really have a lot of trade assets. No. Like, it's Dante and you have, you're giving zero info. It's not like GMs are going to trust like, oh yeah, he's on a time. He's ahead of schedule. <laughs> but yeah. They're going to say like, oh man, I definitely want to trade for him now. Uh, it's you you don't really have any tradable assets you can't trade a first round pick until like the world explodes you don't have any second round picks for like the next 10 years <laughs> i mean these are both factually incorrect but they're basically correct yeah um, yeah essentially and to be clear the trade window is not when trades become legal it's when newly signed players are eligible to be traded so that's when december 15th december 15th and some of them are later depending on exactly how they signed or what they signed but most players in the league will be trade eligible by December or on December 15th. So then like there's talk that maybe that's when Ben Simmons trades could open up more, all this kind of stuff. I forgot about that. (laughs) Yeah. That's still a thing. Fun fact. 
but the Bucks, we don't get those daily uh woad shams updates thank anymore. God. i kind of for, i kind of forgot it's a thing those oh sort of reminded uh, me that that happened we were getting to the point of like woads reporting the sixers hacked ben simmons better health like we were getting <laughs> out of control with the amount of up to ben is in the building but not in the same room as it's like okay what are we tracking him does he have gps like what is whatever anyway i think the injuries are part of the reason we're seeing these moves i think badness also part of the reason rodney hood i had seen some promising signs but also that's not going great either and i think some of this is like let's filter in some of these you know vets who either have or have not been on the bucks before and see if they can do better and so far the signs are like yeah they probably can i mean we'll see more on west he's only played one game boogie the other big addition has played two games Boogie looks awesome. Like, Boogie is passing really well. He's okay defensively. He's attacking mismatches on offense. He's letting threes fly. Like, he's only two for six against Miami in his 11 minutes, but he had three offensive boards, yeah, two he, assists. He got in foul trouble. Yeah, he had three fouls in that, that quick spell. But he had, oh, no, I'm looking at the Nassus. He had four fouls, but he still scores 11 points. Like, he's just productive. I mean, he shot eight free throws in 11 minutes like he just does stuff that some of these other guys are not doing exactly uh back to rodney hood here's a fun stat uh wes matthews and rodney hood have blocked the same amount of shots for this buck season and it uh, happened one. in the same game it did <laughs> one <laughs> it's it's been rough for rodney man i really thought that this could be like and there's still time the to be there's, clear there's there's still time but he's shooting 29 28 31% from two. He hasn't missed a free throw, though. Uh, yeah, he's got a solid uh, uh, nine attempts this season. Yep, nine for nine. <laughs> 11 for 39 on threes. Six for 19 on twos. Which, coincidentally, is also exactly what Shemi Ojale is shooting on twos. Which is a terrible number for a big forward to be shooting on twos. Yeah, so basically what we're trying to say is these guys that they were trying to rehabilitate, it's not looking too great right now, as of right now. Yeah. So if you want to like make a regular season push, get that number one seed, which by the way, they're only like a game and a half back from. Um, it's just, you got to go out there and make these moves. You got to go out there and get these before other teams sign them too. Like yeah. we're saying, the Bucks don't really have ample opportunity, like I was talking about earlier, to make trades because they don't really have any tradable assets. So if you're going to sign guys, you got to sign them early. Otherwise, they're going to go out the wayside. They're going to get other deals. I really think that Boogie could be on the heat right now if the Bucks had waited another week. Because once we found out Bam was going to miss like five to six weeks or whatever it is, like literally their center depth is Dwayne Dedman and then Yurt. Someone yeah, named okay. Yurt. Oh, my Yurt 7. Yeah. Yurt 7. That's what it is. Thank you. Like, I, I've not heard of If I haven't heard of an NBA player... Chances are he's not very proven. Um, and I don't know much about Yurt 7, clearly. He's not that good. Yeah, I, 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 we can say that. Um, That's a good I, point, though. Like, he he might honestly be on the heat. Yeah, he would help them. Like, he's helping the Bucks right now. I think especially with Giannis struggling with injuries and obviously Brooke Lopez being out for extended time. And the other part of it is, like, guys who even on this team wouldn't have opportunities. The two-way guys. I mean, Mamu in these last two games has looked like an NBA player, which is a lot. Like We talked about this on our live stream. That's a lot to ask for from the rookie 54th overall pick. And he also, like Boogie, only two for six against Miami, one for three from deep. He but started. He started this game, chipped in seven rebounds and three assists, continues to move the ball pretty well. You know, the shooting wasn't ideal, I think. But he had, again, he had another nice dunk. Like, he's finding lanes to the rim and, and just finishing with power which is great to see him and bobby have some nice front court chemistry yes. in terms of passing the defense is a little sus <laughs> yeah. but offensively those two have a good uh good feel for the game well and honestly you know you talk about what boogie adds how good is this for sandro i mean i know we talked to him i talked to him about learning from Giannis and, and bobby and that's great i think boogie the way he passes from the traditional post I think that's going to be really good for Mama, who's obviously already a good passer. But talk about another big guy to like just sponge info from. Like Adam and Jordan, I know they talked about this on their pod after Boogie signed. 
I, I think we we jump so quickly to like looking at his degree of washedness. It's worth remembering, like, he was one of the best 10 to 15 players in the league for, like, five years. All-NBA first-team votes. All-NBA second-team twice, I think. Like, yeah. Like, that, I mean, that says you're top 10. Obviously, the center position thing makes it difficult, but in the top, top two center. <laughs> yeah, in a top two center for at least two years. All-stars, I think, four different times. Like, really, like, an elite player in this league, and he's showing why he was now. He's not all the way there anymore. But there's still some helpful stuff. So I think you look at it, I'd be hard-pressed to say Boogie and West won't be in the rotation for the rest of the season. I mean, we'll see how healthy Dante can get. And really, the I remember before the season, we talked about the three-headed monster, I guess, of Shemi, Hood, and Wara. And, like, can one of those guys, you know, be the guy so far, it looks like no. Maybe no. it's just maybe it's just Boogie, and they're just going to be bigger. Yeah, we were wondering, can one of these guys pop? No, apparently <laughs> not. not. Not so far. No. <laughs> Let's see what, uh, what's War is War shooting the same percentage on on twos? No, he's if not. If he is, that's ridiculous. Okay. No, he's forty three percent from two, a little bit better. Actually, thirty six percent from from three as well. His issue is like can't really he hold on to the basketball. He can't do anything else. Yeah. We were talking, like, at least I was saying, like, his offensive scoring ability is good enough that he should be able to play. I take that back. I really do well, take the crazy that back. Th- no, I think his defense has been okay. I think his issue is just, like, you try to push the ball down the court, and he just, like, loses it out of bounds or hands it to the other team. Like, he loses it on drives. He's shooting okay, but not well enough. Like, if I told you Shemi was shooting 36% from three and 43% from two... It's like, great, perfect. Like, he's a defensive first player who's really proven there. War has been, like, good to solid defensively and just a train wreck on offense. Like, literally not been playable because he's just, like, gumming up the offense so bad, which seemed impossible. Like, that was his whole thing. He was a gunner, a sharpshooter, looked great in the Olympics at times, and I don't know what's been going on this year, but it just has not shown up. I think uh, I think Lisa Byington also fantastic. Just, yeah, she's I cannot great. get over just how incredible she's stepped in for Jim. And it was nice to have Jim back on the broadcast last night. For <laughs> it was so good, bit. man. Oh, I miss him. Yeah. I love Lisa. Yeah. Miss Jim. Yeah, just get all three of them. That's what I'm trying to say, Bucks. Come on, money make an idea right there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Lisa was saying like this is Lisa and Marcus were saying like this is this is the difference with NBA basketball. You can look good in any sort of exhibition in the Olympics and preseason as good as you want, the NBA minutes are different. And that's why they were so impressed with Javante Smart. Oh, perfect transition. Oh, thank you. Uh, I worked on that one. Um, who, like you were saying, has been in the Bucks organization for about a week and is playing 30 plus minutes against the Miami Heat and not looking bad, or under, just a shade. 28 minutes, minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And not looking bad, not looking bad at all. My first impression of him, I am obviously a little more unfamiliar because I am not as in touch with the G League uh, as you are. But one, he is a big guard. He is a big guard. 6'4", I think, is underselling him a little bit. He seems a little bit taller. I was trying to like figure out, like, oh, man, why is he? I thought he was a point guard. Why does he look like <laughs> kind of like a 2-3? Uh, but he just he moves fluidly. He can handle the ball well. He looked good. He looked like he belonged on an NBA court, given. There are a lot of moments where he was just like, okay, Chris and Jura, Chris or Drew is on the floor. I'm not doing anything. If, if, even if I have a penetration lane, I'm just kicking it out. <laughs> like there are a couple of times where he had opportunities to drive and he was just like, nope, I'm giving the ball to Chris because that is my safety blanket and offense, uh, which is, you know, fair. So again, first NBA game, it's going to be a little, tip, little bit of a little yeah. bit of nerves, but he looked good. He seemed like he needed to hit some shots. He kept trying. Uh, eventually he did get a three to fall, but I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. Yeah. I think he's one where right now the box score stats don't look great. Like his, his was not, not a great shooting night, couple of turnovers, but he did look like he just fit in more. And that's one where he'll probably get more chances to play. And we'll see how those, those numbers adjust in larger samples. And certainly he had no issue scoring efficiently in the G league where he, basically scored 22 a night on 50, 40, 90 efficiency with Sioux Falls. That was over a five-game sample, but it was his rookie year. Like, he really came on hot. I think 
it's a smart gamble. Like Justin Robinson, two years older, was not really showing all that much on the NBA level. Just makes more sense to say, let's give this guy a shot. And I'm glad that the Bucks now are giving the two-way guys real opportunities. They kind of have to, but not entirely. Especially with Mamu. Especially with Mamu. Like, these are the kind of swing moves where, you know, everyone wants to think about, could this guy be a star? And obviously that'd be great. That'd be awesome if Mamu was a star. But Jokic 2.0. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, who knows? The who near knows? words of John Horst. But even just get a rotation player, right? Like, build him up, build someone up like Pat, where maybe a guy like Javante Smart or Mamu is like on a three year deal for like four million a year after they're a two way. And people around the league are like, oh, who the hell even is that guy? But the Bucks like him. He fits in the system. He's a good culture guy. And he works on the game and he improves. And all of a sudden, You get to, and again, this would be an amazing outcome, but look at where we're at now with Pat, where it's like, he's going to opt out and like triple his salary, if not more, because he's really good. Like, I'm glad they're like proactively giving guys opportunities, kind of having to, but I mean, if they, if, if Bud wanted to go full Tibbs and just play vets a ton of minutes, he could have done that. And they didn't, they started Mamu instead of like Rodney Hood or someone like that. And it's just exciting. And they're really exploring opportunities. You know, they're not resting on the guys that they've had. So I think despite it being a challenging season and, you know, like having Yorgos in the first place was kind of an odd move, but whatever the reasoning was there, I think we're at a pretty good place here. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, uh, it's just like, it's what the Miami Heat have been doing for the last couple of years. That's how you get a guy like Duncan Robinson where you pay up gazillion dollars and just doesn't work out that's not a good example but they keep getting these guys it's like where did they come from uh the first example was probably hassan whiteside yeah it's like he sort of comes through the g league uh, i'm not naming good names right now uh well just, even guys now like max Struess lit up the yeah, box that's a guy that they exactly. brought him along from the g league and then brought him up and and he's now he's like a real player and that's and like javante smart is taken from the heat yeah it's a good org to poach from that's the thing about these g league guys like if you're not in a two-way you're available like someone could come snatch up wenyan gabriel or ray john tucker right now and it's uh, someone probably will at least one of those guys if not both but you know it's it's smart to be proactive with those spots those two ways especially because there's no tax hit right like it's absolutely you can just shuffle through guys as long as you want the new rules You get 50 NBA games instead of a certain amount of NBA days. That's a lot of usage. I mean, and it's and it's prorated from when you're signed. Yeah, but still, I think it is. But I mean, I I think you can't just sign a guy when you have 50 games left. Well, yeah, and you can't. I don't think you can. Like, yeah, because you can't just like release and get another 50 games out of the next guy. But I think Mamu's only played a handful of games. Javante obviously won. I think they're going to be available a lot if the Bucks do need them, and I'm sure we'll see them with the herd too. But I just think now after these moves, the roster makes a little bit more sense. Wouldn't shock me if we saw some more moves. Like, I don't know how long Shemi and Rodney Hood will be here if they continue to just not contribute. Do they try to sell early on Wara even, who I think is going to hit free agency? We'll see. But we know the Bucks. we always say the Bucks will be proactive. That was proven again this last week when they added basically two rotation players plus a promising two-way. And those guys are already playing and looking solid for the Bucks. Yeah, they really are. Uh, should we just do like a let's uh, since we're reevaluating the Bucks roster, should we go through our playoff rotations as of right now? Sure. Oh yeah, it's gonna be fun. Let's do it. Okay. At guard, I sound like I'm doing player intro. <laughs> I was, I was uh, gonna <laughs> say, whoa, we got some energy here. So obviously, you've got Drew Holiday, you've got Grayson Allen. I'm gonna assume. That are we counting West as a guard? Yeah, yeah, okay. I would say. And also, we're going to assume that everyone's healthy come playoff time, even if that's not a fair. Including, including Brooke. Yeah. Okay. Including Brooke, so Dante and Wes and George Hill. Are you, are you just fine. asking me who the guards are? No, I'm. Oh, you're saying? Okay. I'm saying. Okay, so your guards are... Sorry, say it again. I was distracted. So Drew, Grayson, Wes, George, Don. Your rotation is huge. Yeah. Five guards? Well, they're not all going to play the same amount of minutes. 
Well, I know. But, okay, forwards. Forwards. We've got, uh, who we got? We got Chris. We got Giannis. Yeah. Obviously. Uh, Bobby. Yep. Bobby's a four. Sure. Pat. Pat. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. So that's nine. And then my bigs is Brooklyn Boogie. So 11. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of guys for a playoff rotation. I'll, I mean, I'll, do, I'll do some caveats in mine. I'll do some caveats. Okay. So, well, here, can I do my caveats? Yeah, yeah, do your caveats. So, if Dante and Wes are looking around the same, one of them's gone. Yeah, that's, yeah. Or Either, at least situational. Yeah. I'm saying if they're putting in around similar, similar levels of production, uh, both defensively and offensively, only one of those guys is playing. It's going to be Dante as well. Yeah. I think he's younger. He's more athletic. Or, I think it would be Dante. No, no. I mean, that's not that's not Bud's mo. I, I Bud's think Bud likes Dante. I think Bud Dante's likes Dante. His guy. Yeah, Dante is his guy. He, he likes West though. <laughs> Dante played over West in the bubble when he absolutely shouldn't have. That's true. I think that's he true. would play over West now when he's proven more than than he did then. Um, I, I think my guards are mostly the same. If that's your guard caveat. Um, I obviously so realistically I have four guards. Drew and Grayson are obvious. And then George Hill, I think, is obvious. And then really it's I think realistically in the real world, it's whoever's healthier out of Wes and Dante. I think if they're both equally healthy, as long as he doesn't look super rusty, it's probably going to be Dante. But Wes is nice insurance, right? Like, what if something exactly. else happens? What if he doesn't get fully healthy? Like that's I think that's what Wes is for. Then the forwards, Chris and Giannis, of course, Pat, of course, Bobby situationally. I'll say I think I think Bobby's he solidified himself in. See, we had the opposite take a little while ago. I know, but here's the thing. He's been playing the best basketball of his career. He has. In this he's been awesome. Stretch. It's he's been, been really incredible. He's doing it offensively. He's doing it defensively. He's getting rebounds. He's being in the right spots. He's not getting picked on anymore. They've sort of melt, went to a scheme where he's not able to be exploited as much. They're not like just super deep dropping him, or they're not just like having him switch onto guard and you know try yeah. to get beaten. The Tatum game that, that was the exactly. Celtics game was brutal. They're not doing that anymore. So I think Bobby sort of solidified himself a playoff spot because those weaknesses that we saw that took him out of that Brooklyn series, I feel like he's sort of shored up those weaknesses a little bit. I still think there's a situation where there can be a defensive orientated forward who fits in here somewhere, whether that it somehow ends up being Shemi a lot of season ago. We'll see, you know, I know that like rare monkey and in, in our discord, one of the few people, it's not even an Island, like, you know, standing in waders on the Shemi Ojale coral reef. And there's not many polyps left there, but you know, the, the case is like, well, he's still, the, the calf is still bothering him or whatever else. So we'll see. There's a lot of season left. So potentially we'll see that. But TA potentially for very small spells just to defend? I don't know. I think there's room there, though. I think with some of the teams they're going to play, namely Brooklyn, I think we'll, we'll see one other guy at least get chances. And maybe that's a roster move player. I guess we'll find out. And then center, Brook hopefully. And then Boogie. I'm to the point where I want to see Boogie in almost every game. I don't know. I, I think, think he's yeah. looked so good. Like I think we're also in that new period where it's like, I, we want to see him. Honeymoon yeah, phase. We're yeah. in the honeymoon phase with the Boogie where it's like, ooh, I want to I want to see him. I want to see boogie. what he can do. What's Boogie? Yeah. Yeah. I want, to, I want him to start some games here and there. I'm, honestly, the fact that Sandro started over him is kind of funny. And I think part of it is I think they like having Boogie and Bobby to go like give each other rest and stuff, but um, he's looked good, even if it is like limited spells. Although I think there will probably be some teams where he just doesn't play, but we'll see. I mean, the way he's looked so far, the way he's been able to live on defense, and if he gets a small guy, really just automatically take that guy to the paint for two points offensively with the passing and maybe the shooting, it's pretty intriguing. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Plus, he's just like, like also, I don't think this has been talked about too much. He's just like a bully. Yeah, he is. He's strong and he's he looks good physically. Yeah, 
Like he, he's sort of a, he sort of trimmed down a little bit and oh, yeah. out of necessity because yeah. he had a very large frame that contributes to lower like injuries. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was rough. Was I don't bad. know how he did what he did when he was that way. Honestly, dude. I, mean, I don't know how he like, I don't know how you make it. What do you have an ACL and an Achilles? Like, yeah. I don't know how you make it back from both of those to keep playing. That's incredible. After like all, all the earnings and everything. That's why I think it's underrated. Like when he talked about what the Bucks process with him was like before he was signed, like they, he, the way he made it sound, it was like an extensive workout. Like the Bucks were like, we're going to make sure that you're ready for this. And then they also had an extensive like expectation setting conversation. So everyone would be on the same page and make sure that Boogie was really down for this kind of role. And so far it all looks great. And it just looks like a good process and a good result. Yeah. Plus, like, I know Bucks fans have been clamoring for a guy that's just like not going to take any BS. He's Boogie's, he's Boogie's a good enforcer, dude. He is a yeah. good enforcer. I'm telling you, this this comp is getting better and better. Greg Monroe. Yeah. Like Greg Monroe like was it. not taking anything from anyone, and uh, he was like a, the best passer from the center position. Uh, yeah. Like he could Boogie's do it. He was like a guy three assist guy. Sense. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't know. This comp is getting better and better. Why not just just bring back Greg Monroe as an assistant? <laughs> I had thought about Greg Monroe for a while when they really needed a center. That was one of the. I think he's in the G League right now. Like he's very is available. He? I think he is. Oh, I wow. think he's. I think he's staging a comeback. But um, let's go. I'm rooting good, for him. Yeah. Good luck, Greg Monroe. Um, but yeah, Boogie is Boogie has been good. So I, it's funny because I think on the way in we were like, no way, he's a playoff guy. Like my expectation was sponging regular season minutes. And by the end of the first game, I was like, he better play every game. I need I need Boogie in my life. Uh, also, another thing on Boogie, just, I don't know, we're just talking about Boogie pod. Yeah. Um, like, there was a stretch where you we talked about earlier, he had like three fouls and like a little bit of a spell. He got called for another one. And he's just like sort of getting really upset. And Chris is sort of like, DC, come on. It's okay. <laughs> like, Chris is Chris is that guy, though. He is that because guy. He, he was that guy with, like, uh, even then, with Bobby, with Bobby yeah. in the finals. Where he's just like settled the f down. Yeah, that like was we're great. talking about like guys where are they going to fit in the Bucks culture? The Bucks culture is real. Yeah, like they they do not take anything. Like Giannis has said in the past, him and Chris they root out all the a holes. Yeah, they they don't take anything. But they don't I, take anyone that's out of line. And I know you're not saying this. I was never very worried about Boogie like taking. No, the not Bucks. at all. I, I don't think not he's a problem. All. I think the Clippers enjoyed having him. I think the Warriors. He was good. Every there. Every team that's yeah. had Boogie has said they've loved Boogie. Except, I mean, the Kings are the Kings, and that's. The Kings just didn't want to play I, in the Supermax. Well, also, I can't believe George Carl didn't get along with a star player. We've never seen that before in Milwaukee. Ray <laughs> Allen, who is uh, adored by everyone, who also got traded away by George Carl for yeah, no and, real reason. Like, that's also, what George like, Carl does. Yeah, Carmelo also, Anthony. Um, uh, Boogie with uh, Grant Napier. The, the Kings that, was, that was excellent. If you're unaware of this, like... During, I want to say, one of the the more I more just a, a period of more awareness on on Black Lives Matter and similar things, Boogie just like innocuously, what did he, did he ask him about he just, Black Lives he Matter? Just, was that it? He or? literally added Grant Napier and he was like, "What are your thoughts on Black Lives Matter?" That's it. That was the tweet. And then I, Grant had he he was he was hooked. He was absolutely it was, hooked. He, he tweeted he a response that I'm not going to say because I don't want to give it any credit. But he immediately lost his job. <laughs> and and Boogie knew exactly what he was doing. Exactly. Boogie knew exactly. Oh, there's an NBA.com statement on this. Yeah. So I like I said, I don't want to give his response any any credence, so I'm not gonna say it, but I remember what it was. Yeah, but yeah. uh Boogie Boogie he, he seems like he knows what he's doing and he knows how to get it. <laughs> like, that was incredible. Incredible work by Boogie. He seems like a good culture guy. Why not? If you're going to have someone complain to the refs, like why not have it be a guy who has a history of complaining to referees and sort of has that credibility? And also, if he's a guy that gets attacked, all that's going to happen is he's going to fire up the team. It's not like he's the star player anymore and it's, he gets ejected. That's the team's downfall. You know? Like, oh, yeah. All he's going to do is fire up the rest of the team. No, I, I honestly think like Bobby has gotten so good and important that having a different big guy who can push over Chris Paul is essential. And Boogie hates Chris Paul. It's perfect. Boogie hates racism 
and Chris Paul. And who cannot get on board with that platform? What is there to dislike? Like when Bobby came in and we said, hey, listen, this guy punched Nikola Miritich in the face. That's a beautiful thing. Boogie hates Chris Paul and racism. What could you not like about that? Exactly. This is a clip for sure. This is a social clip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, just uh, I we can't get enough of the Boogie experience, even though we just went through our playoff rotations. We're just like, we managed to talk about Boogie again. Um, yeah, I don't really know. I don't know where the tweet is just so good. I just looked up his it's Boogie's so tweet. Just like, was I right? He just added him and at just asked Grant him what show, what's your take on BLM? Question mark. And and then apparently after he posted, that's exactly what I expected you to say. <laughs> Did he really say that? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I love this move. I'm trying I to I gotta move. I gotta find that tweet. But I, I read there was literally an NBA press release that, that has this detail. Um, Cousins, who has been criticized by Napier in the past, this guy was pretty vicious to Boogie. Yeah. I think a lot of people were that he couldn't carry the Kings, which literally no one has done for the last 20 years. But might be a Kings problem. Yeah, it might be a Kings problem. Um, so Cousins posted that Napier's response was expected. This is in an NBA press release. Former Kings forward Matt Barnes then called Napier a closet racist, also in the press release. So uh, other people had takes to. That's enough Grant Napier talk for the rest of the year and probably the existence of this podcast. Yeah. But shout out to Brady Cousins. Also, I, what a bad iconic line. If you don't like that, then you don't like NBA basketball. Like, I think it's Kings basketball, right? No, he His did version? NBA as well. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Just like, okay, sure. Don't tell people what to like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, we're, we're caping for Boogie a lot. For a guy. Do we also... Quick, quick, rapid fire. Both Wes and Boogie, do they make it past the guaranteed date? Both of them? Yes. I'll say quick, yes. Quick, just rapid fire. I'll say yes. Okay. I'll say yes. I'll say yes, too. I think I think so. they could be important. Well, I, I just wonder, like, if How you, are you going to do any better? I, I guess da Dante. That's the one. Yeah, but that's, that's not going to cost you a see. roster spot. Well, tax. tax our, our, our old friend of the show, luxury tax savings. Like no, but uh, vet, vet mins don't count against luxury tax. I don't know about that. I'm I think they sure. do. I think they do. I think it's I think it's less, but I think they still count against it. I'm pretty positive. Um, because if they didn't, then teams like the Bucks would have three maxes and twelve vet min contracts. I think. I don't know if all of the deal does, but I'm I'm pretty positive some of it does. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, but um, the it doesn't one... count against the cap, like the hard. Yeah, cap. yeah, yeah. Um, but the one scenario is, if Dante comes back and looks good, that could nuke Wes's role basically. But I don't think there's going to be another roster move where they would need the spot because that, of course, is way before the trade deadline, the guaranteed date, January seventh, I think, and way before the buyout market really starts in like March. So I, I don't I, I'd be hard pressed to find another free agent who they'd be like oh yeah we'd waive Wes Matthews for this guy so I really think Robin it'd be Lopez. Wes. Honestly, I'm telling I, you, I, bring I, back the entire crew. I see all the posts about Robin now, and and I think people are saying a trade of like Shemi and Hood would work or something like that. It technically works, but I don't know why the Magic would do that. Yeah, they wouldn't. Um, the Bucks found the backup center. I don't think they need another center. Even with Brooke out for a while, I don't think you need more centers. I think you need another four who can play. But between Giannis... Bad Young isn't happening, by the no, way. No, I, I don't he's think bought so. Out. I, that would be awesome. Which some team is trick. Some team is trading for. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's what the Spurs want. They're not really using him for that purpose. And he's made it very clear that he's, he's not happy about it. Same with so John Wall. A, yeah. It seems like uh, those two, both of those guys are meeting ends with their teams relatively soon yeah um john wall future buck what about kevin love oh yeah i don't think they're gonna get rid of him but he's been showing kevin some signs Love's of life five. this year yeah it probably is now um but i think between boogie Giannis, and a little bit of bobby i think they're probably good at the five i think another four and would with help hopefully a lot. brooke returning yeah especially if brooke is back by end of season like the bucks are saying they would they would like to see or they, they're saying that they expect, obviously, they would like to see that. it might happen. That. Yeah, That's yeah, what they're yeah. Um, I don't know what other roster moves could be made. I know, like I just mentioned, John Wall's been linked to the team. Uh, I'm no longer Somehow. in on Gary Harris. 
No, Gary, no, no. Can't no. play anymore. That man hasn't been able to play offense in three years. Yeah, it's it's tough. Sorry, and Gary. It's Tory Craig 2.0. Like, why? That might actually be insulting to Tory Craig, which sounds wild, but... Yeah, you're right. Like, Sorry, that Tory. might even be mean to Tory, who I I have a pension of being mean to Tory, but that might be a little too much. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any other real moves that can be made, right? I mean, I forgot about Wes, so maybe there's someone else out there like that, but I don't know who it would be. Kyle Corver? God, I hope not. Sorry, um, Kyle. Bring just bring back the band, trade for Bledsoe. Uh, you know? Oh, you know what? Let's follow up on this because we argued about this. How's Bled doing for the twelve and twelve oh. LA Clippers? Let's oh, see. That's true. Let's we see. Did have an argument about Nine points per game, twenty-seven percent from three, forty-eight percent from two is not bad. Nine points, four rebounds, three point five assists, two turnovers. Started twenty-two of their games. Not terrible. Below league average point guard. Yeah. Maybe, maybe average. I assume the defense is still pretty good. He's maybe, been he's been pretty good defensively. Maybe, maybe, maybe around average, but probably below. What he's did not, I say? I wanted wall. Wrong. I said I wanted wall. Yeah, you wanted wall. I guess we'll see if he plays. How that how that looks. I don't know. He doesn't have the Rockets. Don't want him to play. It's sad. It's sad. It really is. It's sad. I mean, it's. You, because I, I get it's it. Compli- I, yeah, I get situation. it. I get it from the Rockets' perspective. But, like, you shouldn't be able to just get a guy and then, like, banish him. But Yeah. I, but then I, it's also, like, if you want to have a divorce, you got to give it up if you're John Wall. Then. Yeah, and, of course, he doesn't want to. Because he has to. a massive <laughs> – he's, like, 45 mil, I think. Yeah, next year, mil? too. Yeah, it's uh, two oh, years yeah. left. He's got two years on that thing. Well, this and next year, I mean. but Yeah. A lot of money. Just a wild contract. Oh my god, DJ Augustine's throwing less than four points a game. Yeah, I feel bad for DJ. But shooting 40, 40, 90. They're just not really playing him. Yeah, they started playing their vets again a little bit, like Eric Gordon's hitting game winners. That actually, there's a guy who I'm a little interested in. He is a too big of a contract. Yeah, I know. It's like 17. I, I, don't, I don't think they would buy him out either. No, no chance. What's he at? I think 17. Uh, what's his name? Eric Gordon. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, Eric Gordon is making twenty one. Yeah, he got a. That's that was like rough. the last thing Maury did was give him a huge deal. Oh yeah, Maury gave everyone except PJ Tucker the bag and yeah, bag. and then PJ came to Milwaukee and got the ring. PJ got his ring in Saturday. That was nice. Nice. That was nice. That was nice. It was, I, good it was good. I was glad the love good. is still there between him and yeah, the city. Exactly. The, I'm okay. The if crowd he seemed the to really. Yeah, that's like. Who cares? I do sometimes uh, too. I can relate. Yeah. yeah. Like I have a, enemies with the, uh, uh, <laughs> the injury reports and stuff. It's Bucks all PR. part of the process. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Actually, okay. Just Bucks PR at large, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> on that note. You said it, not me. <laughs> I know. But on that note, probably time to wrap. Yeah, it's now probably time to Now that we're declaring enemies, I think we're ready to <laughs> call it a show. Uh, Bucks PR, if you're listening to this, I do not want to be your enemy. No. Uh, to be clear, <laughs> at Bucks um, PR, come on the pod. I don't even know if there's an account called that. It, it hasn't tweeted in like four years, which is fitting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we also planned for this to be like a 35 minute episode, and it's like pushing an hour 10 now. Well, so, see, uh, I, you know what? When I said let's get a. Let's get a 30 minute. I was like, we'll probably keep it to an hour if we aim for 35 minutes. And it exactly. worked out perfectly. It did work out perfectly. This is also why we do plugs up top. Um, but also, I can do plugs again. Sorry if this is repeating myself. But make sure you are subscribed on your podcast platform of choice. Make sure you leave a five-star review. Ty, I know we have some five-star reviews. So we should Big get news. one of those read. Big news. We're three away from 200. They've been oh, flooding in lately. Let's go. If you haven't left one on an Apple device, on Apple Podcasts, five stars, please. We're getting very close. So... Here we go. We have a pile of them now. I love this. But five stars from G-Y-J-V-V. I don't know how to pronounce that. But five-star review. That's what matters. Perfect listen for any Bucks fan. Exclamation point. Great. High energy start here. Such an amazing listen for any Bucks fans. A true podcast for the true fan. It's been exciting to see this podcast growth as we've gone forward. 
and the content continues to get better and better. Thank you guys for giving me a great place for Bucks content. You're welcome. Thank you for the yeah. very nice review. That is a very kind review. It is very appreciated. It's nice to see. Like, also, it was great to see when Spotify rap came out. Just like everyone Dude, tweeting. Dude, that like was so there. cool. It was so heartwarming. It was incredible. I almost wanted to start crying. Like, yeah. It was, it was emotional. Like, it means we truly do appreciate the support so much. So that review, thank you, Philip. Thank you. It's like, when I remember that day, I think I got mine first or something. And then I was like, oh, I should send a tweet to see if anybody had our show on theirs because that'd be neat to know. And I checked either my account or the Eurostep account. And I saw that it was like two or three already up just like pretty early in the morning. And I was like, oh, wow, this rocks. And then they just kept coming throughout the day. So I think at least one of us replied or at least retweeted and shared all of them. But that was awesome. So thank you to everyone who did that. And of course, who left a review or if you're just listening and subscribed, wherever you listen, pod platform, YouTube, like thanks for that too. It all means a lot to us. Yeah, it, it really does. It also matters. Like if you're listening, make sure you subscribe, whether it be YouTube, the podcast platform of choice, make sure you subscribe. Also make sure you subscribe to the Substack, gspn.substack.com. Uh, like Ty mentioned, you get an email notification every time we post, plus articles written by all of us. So uh, make sure you subscribe there. A lot of good work being done over on our Substack. We're trying to grow that. So make sure you subscribe to that, please. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening to this episode. Uh, go Bucks. We'll talk to you next time.